the volleyball team hadn't won a road match all year. Could they get their first against the conference leading UNLV Rebels? We've got highlights and an analysis. Another week for the Rams football team, another loss. Scott Houston is putting on his professor pants and giving the Rams defense their midterm grades. And we're going streaking. Okay, not really, but this guy at the Texas Tech game did. See the whole video coming up in case you missed it. This is CTV Sports. Welcome to CTV Sports. I'm Ryan Hillman, joined this week by Riley Adams. Riley, another Monday where we're missing the Broncos play on TV. I know. I'm pretty upset, but you know what? We can do it. As for the Broncos, they are losing 17-0 with less than a minute in the half, and San Diego Chargers are within field goal range. Mm -hmm. Not looking good right now. Yep. Anyways, back to CSU Sports. Got a lot to cover. Let's start the show off with this week's Around the Fort. Let's start with the volleyball team. The Lady Rams finally got their first road win of the season and it came against a very important opponent, the Mountain West leading UNLV Rebels. But the Rams didn't just beat the best team in the conference. The Rams swept the Rebels in the Rebels home court. The Rams victory was led by Dana Cranston, Bree Page, and Megan Ford, who combined for 35 kills in the match. After a week away from Moby, the Rams are back at home playing Boise State this Thursday at seven. Make sure you get out there and get Moby rocking. Now, speaking of Moby Rocky, the CSU men's and women's basketball teams gave CSU Ram fans a sneak peek at both teams tonight during their new Moby Madness event. The event introduced both teams for this year, players, as well as both new coaches, Larry Eustachy and Ryan Williams. The players competed in different events such as skills, competitions, a three-point shootout, and a dunk contest to conclude the evening. Players and coaches were available to sign autographs for the fans after. We'll have video of the competition for you on our website tomorrow morning. And finally, for the sixth straight week, the Rams football team finished the weekend with a loss that came against the San Diego State Aztecs. This loss is pretty much another case of deja vu for the Rams. Both sides of the ball not playing well enough to keep up with the Aztecs. However, we did see some very promising glimpses out of freshman quarterback Connor Smith. Smith went 18 for 22 for 165 yards. He didn't throw any touchdowns and he did throw an interception. But that throw did go through the hands of a Rams receiver before it was intercepted. The Rams have a bye week this week before playing Hawaii, giving Coach Mack a long time to decide who will be the starting quarterback for that game. Sticking with the football team, last week our very own Scott Houston gave us his midterm grades for the week Rams offense. And this week Scott is giving us his midterm grades for the Rams defense. Scott, take it away. All right, thanks guys. Last week I received some flack for putting the offensive side on academic probation, but this week it is now time to give the defense their midterm grades, starting with the defensive line. This unit had the most questions coming into this season with almost the entire starting unit from last season gone, but they have performed a lot better than expected through most of the season. Transfers like Lanston Tannehill from Appalachian State have been a blessing, but they still haven't been what the Rams need to be a 500 program. Late in games, they start to get overpowered, but that's a lot due to the fact that they cannot get off the field. They have not been great this year, but have done very well for the position they're in. Midterm grade, C. All right, on to the linebacker unit. This has been arguably the best unit for the entire football team. Leaders James Skelton, Shaq Barrett, and freshman Corey James have led this team. They lead the team in sacks and tackles, but have regularly struggled against the run. Most teams have been able to get past the first wave of defenders to get into the secondary for the big run game. Just watch any footage from the Air Force game. This crew is leading the team, but still has a lot of room for improvement. C plus. And last, and possibly least, is the secondary. Coach Max said going into this year they would be the strongest part of the team, but they have been far from that early in the year. They were exploited and caused the Rams to lose quite a few games. However, Coach McElwain called them out and challenged them to play better a few weeks ago, and they have responded. Playing very tight coverage against Fresno State and San Diego State, it's difficult to grade such polar opposites, so the midterm grade, incomplete. And while the Rams currently rank 96th out of 123 teams, a lot of the blame can be put on, not a lot of the blame can be put on them. The offense has not been able to stay on the field and has been committing a lot of turnovers in very bad territory. But with that said, they still need to be playing better in the second half of the season if the Rams want to be more than average. 
Hopefully in the bye week, the Rams can regroup and come back with some better game plans for the second half of the year, starting with the orange out against Hawaii in two weeks. Thanks for that, Scott. When we come back, we'll have a new segment we call What Are the Odds? Find out if Riley and I can think the Rams football team can win more than three games this year. We'll be right back. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. We can keep students in school. Visit boostup.org and take the first step. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. And Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Welcome back to CTV Sports. It's now time for a segment we call, What are the Odds? Ryan, our producer Ryan will give us one topic and Ryan Hillman and I will give you our thoughts on the chances of that thing happening. So let's kick this thing off and throw it over to Ryan for the first topic. Guys, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little upset. Broncos game, uh, it's now 24-0 Chargers at halftime. Uh, they need to regroup over there in San Diego for the Broncos. All right, uh, you know what? Let's forget about that game. It's making me upset. Uh, let's go to the CSU Rams football team. Uh, they make me upset as well. But um, we, saw, we saw some pretty good things out of Connor Smith. Uh, what are the chances we see him starting at least one game this year for the Rams? You know, Ryan, my number is 60%. You know, we don't know if MJ McPeak is out for good with his left shoulder injury, but with Connor Smith, the redshirt freshman, starting in this last game, or not starting, excuse me, playing, we saw some good potential out of him. We really don't know what's going to happen with MJ, but don't count this kid out. I agree, Riley. I'm going with 75%. You know what? I think we need to focus on the future for the Rams. We're not doing so good right now, so why not look to the future? It can't hurt us. Give this kid a shot. Give him some experience. It's only going to help us in the long run. I agree. Yeah, I completely agree with what Ryan Hillman was saying. I mean, we're one in six. He's a freshman quarterback. It just put him in. Let him play. Get, a, get some experience. Maybe he can play for us uh, for his next three years. Um, okay, we mentioned earlier the Rams volleyball team beat conference-leading Rebels. Uh, they're 11-6 and six now. They still got 11 games to play. Six of those games are away from Moby, where the Rams have struggled. Guys, what are the chances the volleyball team is playing in the national tournament at the end of the season? Ryan, my number is 75%. I have extremely high hopes for this team. They just went on the road where, yes, they do struggle, but it was against the number one team in the Mountain West, UNLV Rebels, at their home, and mm -hmm. we swept them far, far away. Mm -hmm. Now our next two games are here at Moby this Thursday and Friday, and I think that's really going to be where our momentum kicks in. I've, got, I've still got really great things for this team. Riley, so do I. I'm going with 80%. Um, love how the team is finally coming together, especially on the road where we've struggled, like you said. Coach Hilbert is not going to let this team fail, that's for sure. Seniors Megan Plord and Breon Page, they're going to come together and grab the reins of this team and whip them into shape. And uh, we'll be in the tournament, no worries. I think so too. Guys, I like the confidence. I do have trust in this team. They scare me sometimes because they lose to teams that they shouldn't lose to, but I think they're going to get on a roll here, especially after beating UNLV, and start winning some games. All right. Finally, wrap things up, uh, we're going to go back to the football team. They have the week off this week. Thank goodness, they needed it. Um, they play five more opponents, three of which also have one win, UNLV, Wyoming, and Hawaii. Guys, what are the chances that the football team wins three games this year? My number is 35%. Unfortunately, I want to have faith in this team. I just can't right now. With all the struggling injuries, you know, the six past losses, I don't think it's going to happen this year. Mm -hmm. In a bye week, it's not enough time for Coach Mack to, uh, you know, pick up all the struggles of the Rams. I don't see it happening. Riley, d don't worry about your 35% because I'm going with 25%. Whew. You wow. know what? Looking at the teams Ryan said, I think we can only win two of these games. So, Ram fans, that looks, that's another three and nine season, fourth in a row. You know, wish we could win out and go to a bowl game, but I don't see that happening. Hopefully next year we can 
get more crudes. Maybe some recruits. I think that would be great. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ryan, for coming and doing this game with us. Woo! All right. Coming up this week's installment of In Case You Missed It, we've got streaking a 63-year-old field goal, a 128,000-foot skydive, and a bed as big as a room. We'll explain all of them next. We'll see you soon. Bring out the action hero in you. Be part of the greatest action movie ever. Show us how you train and eat like an action hero. Join in at actionheroalliance.com. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, and there was a, I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Welcome back to CTV Sports. I'm Riley Adams. He's Ryan Hillman, and it's now time for In Case You Missed It. These are all the sports stories that may have flown under your radar for the week. And this week, we have a lot of we them. Do. We Hillman, do. let's start with football. Well, middle school football. Middle school. Middle school. We've got a 14-year-old Blake Carter showing all the NFL kickers just how easy it is to break their record of the long field goal. Look, this kid's in eighth grade. Eighth grade? This kid just hit puberty. Absolutely. I, <laughs> you can tell, I guess. <laughs> I mean, just look at that. The Cowboys losing yesterday because their kicker missed it. Sign this kid up. I think he took his place already. He Sorry. deserves a couple million bucks. He's in, he's in the NFL soon. All right. Riley, I got a queen size bed. I, I got a full. All right. Well, Al Jefferson of the Utah Jazz decided a California king size bed wasn't big enough. Just wasn't. So look at this. He got a custom made bed, which is 10 feet by 12 feet. But those aren't the most impressive numbers, Riley. The bed cost him an impressive number of. 23,000 moolah dollars. Ooh, I cannot believe that number. You know what? If that much money was a quarter in my pocket, I may get a bed that size too. But you know what? That could probably fit maybe a small village. I don't know. It's a little over the top. The Jazz are going to have some great team uh, chemistry this year. Team bonding for sure. Now, yep. Ryan, as you know, we have a soft spot for streakers. We do. Sometimes they're the most entertaining part of the game. Mm -hmm. Well, this weekend in the Texas Tech West Virginia game, we had another streaker run on the field, but this one had some interesting aspects. Now, instead of taking his clothes off and then going onto the field, this guy decides to take his clothes off on the field, maybe do a little dance for the security guards. I think it's pretty funny with all the cowboy hats yes. the security cards are wearing as well. Where are the ropes and horses? I, I think that would have improved this much better. Because we're in Texas, so it fit right in. I think so, too. And for the fans, I mean, what a show. Oh, yeah. This definitely took some planning. I love it. This love is it. the best streaking I've ever seen before. Number one for sure. All right, Riley. we got to give a special CTV <laughs> shout-out to the man that accomplished something that no one has ever done before or even thought of. That is Felix Bumgartner who broke the world record for highest skydive ever. He was 43,000 yards in the air and was the first human to break a sound barrier. You know, Ryan, I've skydived before and I really don't think I could do this. He is a, an absolute beast. This is amazing. Just thinking, he was looking at a small planet and now was Earth. That's how high he was. Absolutely. I, I can't even imagine what we can do later on with all that technology. I, it, I'm excited to see what can happen. Absolutely. All right, well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. Be sure to check out us on website ctvnews11.collegian.com for all the clips you may have missed from this week's episode or our other ones. Yes, and especially check tomorrow for highlights of the Moby Madness event happening right now over at Moby Arena. Big dunks, I know for sure. <laughs> also, be sure to follow us on here at here, here on Twitter. We got some good stuff to say. For all breaking news in the sports world, for Riley Adams, I'm Ryan Hillman. We'll see you next week. Students are responsible for all CTV content, therefore they bear responsibility for the decisions they make. CTV is not an official program of Colorado State University, but is produced by an independent, non-profit corporation using the name CTV pursuant to a license granted by CSU.